And then you have the cables or the rope on both ends. You have the weight and then you have the let's say a fourth P. And then fully supported at here by support. So <coughs> You want to find P given the weight W and we will make two assumptions. One is that the pulley is frictionless. And the second one is that the rope is inextensible. So for the first one, we're saying that uh, there's no friction between the rope and the pulley, which means the pulley is not going to introduce any force. The second part is that the rope by itself doesn't stretch. So if it doesn't stretch, then it's not also going to introduce any force. <coughs> then we look at different points. We look, let's say, one point here, we call this as A. We look at this contact point as B. Then we look at this point C. And we look at point D. So <coughs> we have, let's say, point A, there is the unknown force P. Then you have the D and there will be weight at that point. Then <coughs> we have the pulley at the support of the pulley there is going to be a reaction that is called the reaction as R. So these are the forces. You have the force at the pulley which is the reaction of support. Then you have the force at point and D, then we are going to look at this here and this here, which means the rope part and <coughs> let's take the AB by itself, since it is the rope it should be in tension and the force at both ends of that, let's call this as TAB then on this end the force is going to be same as TAB. So <coughs> that's for the AB part then for the CD. Again that should be in tension. So you have a force which is T C D and T C D. So both parts of the rope are considered to be in tension. Now <coughs> this rope is same as on this side. It's the exact same rope running over both ends. And we made the assumption that pulley was frictionless and the rope is inextensible. So your tension, which means T A B should be same as T C D and let's call this as some tension T. Or, or all we're saying is that the, the, the same tension which runs through all the way across that row. Then at this point, so this becomes T and this becomes T as well as T. Then <coughs> this rope is connected at point A, so it's the same point here, you will have a force of magnitude T. I mean this point was A mm -hmm. and that's what you get as forces on point A. And this is point B on the pulley, your rope is on one of the side of this, then you have this force, so there will be an exact same force in the opposite direction, we call that as T. 
then you come to the point D, this is the rope which is connected at that point, so you get a tension which is about the same as T. Then <coughs> this point here is C, you have this part of the rope connected to that, so you have exact force but in opposite direction. So now you have a total of uh, five free body diagrams. You have the free body diagram of point A, point D, then you have the free bodies for the two ends of the rope, and then you have the free body for the pulley. And we can write the equations of equilibrium. I mean if I look at point A, or I can just write it here, if I sum my forces in the y direction for point A, what you get is you get T minus P equals to 0 or T as P. Then I can sum the forces for the pulley in the <coughs> y direction, that should be 0. You get R minus T minus T equals to 0 or the reaction that pulley is 2 times of T. Then we do the same thing here. We sum the forces at the y direction, we set this to 0, we get T as, or we can say that T minus W is 0, or you get T as W. So, <coughs> the tension comes out will be W, so the reaction is going to be 2 times of the weight, and then your force P will be exactly equal as the weight. So, <coughs> this is a very trivial example. But you can see that if your whole thing was in equilibrium, then if you isolate at different points, like you isolate the point A, you isolate the point D, and you isolate the pulley, then you are able to find forces on those systems. Now we're going to look at a few more examples. So if I had a set where you have two springs in parallel, then you had a force F acting on this. Then so this thing here is fixed. And you've given the spring constant, you're given constant K and the spring constant K. So for this problem, you're given force magnitude F, then you're given the spring constant K and you want to find the elongation in the assembly. So that's the question and <coughs> we're going to draw the free body for every of these components. So I take the, the, the spring at the top by itself, then I take the spring at the bottom by itself and then we take the plate by itself. So these are the individual components of that assembly. You have two springs and one plate. So we already know that there's a force F acting on the plate. Now the springs where they're being elongated they will be in tension which means both and let's say there is a force F1. Then to balance that force, there's going to be another force of exact same magnitude, but it's going to be in opposite direction. Same thing happens to the second spring. You will have a force here, we call this as F2, then you're going to have another force here with the same magnitude, but it's going to be in opposite direction. So <coughs> that shows the force on each of the springs. And another thing you'll notice is that since it's connected to the plate at these two points, so if there is a force F1 here, you're going to have exact same force, but in opposite direction. Same thing at this point, you'll have exact same force in opposite direction. So, 
these two forces I mean if I call this as action on the spring then this force here is the reaction of the spring on the plate are you looking at the third law of Newton same thing here if you consider this as the force in a spring then this force here is going to be exactly same magnitude but it's in opposite direction and you consider that as the third law of Newton so now we have three bodies for each component this is the component by itself the first spring that's the second component and then we have the forces on the plate then we were given that this assembly was in equilibrium so if this thing is in equilibrium then any part you take out of that will also be in equilibrium and you can see that if I sum the force for the spring that should be zero in x direction and you get negative f1 positive f1 and that adds up to zero same thing happens here if I sum the forces in x direction then you get f2 going one way you get f2 another way and that adds up to zero so and there is no force in the y direction you don't have to worry about those second equations now if I come to the plate it's the same set of equations you have force in the x direction that's going to be f1 that's a negative force then you have f2 that's another negative force plus positive f and that goes to zero and your second equation which is fyi that should be zero there is no force in the y direction so that's zero and it goes, goes to zero equals to zero so I mean you don't need the second equation for this set sort of problem from here you can see that f is f1 plus f2 now we come back to the spring and we look at the spring relationships we will see that your f1 the force in the spring should be k times delta where k is the spring stiffness same way your force f2 will be the spring stiffness multiplied by the elongation I mean this thing elongates let's say by um, amount of delta so <coughs> that's the relationship between the applied force in the spring and the elongation you put this back here you get f as k delta and k delta and you get delta as f over 2k so that's the equation which gives you the actual elongation of two springs those who are in parallel now we are look at another example 